So as Louise just said, we're here to discuss breathing exercises, Gabrielle Glazer's American Baby. Um, this also, we, we've we mentioned the last couple episodes about our Patreons voting for our next book for next season. So we're kind of getting ready to close that out. So just remember if you if you're a Patreon and you want a vote in what we read next season, maybe there's even a book we've never heard of. Mm -hmm. Just reach out to us either via the socials or you can email us adoption the making of me.com or what am I saying? Adoption the making of me at gmail.com. Um and give us your vote. Uh, if you're a Patreon, we are listening to your to your votes. Um, if you're not a Patreon and you want to become one to give us some input, then please do. Um, please there, do. there are so many books out there that we haven't even known about. So yeah, we're up to three, I think in the running, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's um, kind of cool. So and thanks to the new Patreons, people are coming on. It's wonderful for us. So it really is. Well, here we are back to, uh, I, I kind of, you know, this, this book, this chapter again was just, I mean, Margaret and George having kids mm. and moving, ultimately moving to the suburbs and becoming so, you know, societally accepted. Correct. And at, what it, she, at one point she said that the only thing that, that made her not acceptable prior mm -hmm. was a piece of paper, a marriage yeah. certificate. That's that what, was the difference yes. between keeping her child and not keeping her child. It, it, it kind of blows my mind how they really stayed together and, and I mean, became this family with several children. The, the reason it's called breathing exercises, I like that too, because she kind of gets a little more modern in the childbirth process we go through with her with Lamaze and learning. Right, that, right. And being afraid to mm, go to lose, sleep, you know, go to, to, to go yeah. And then, and then, you know, once they move to the suburbs and she's, the, she becomes this whole, like then her, the parents move in as they get older and she's taking care of them. And then all the neighborhood kids. And I highlighted uh, the woman once deemed unfit to be a mother had become one, in fact, for everybody. I love that line. She wasn't fit, but look at how wonderful she is now. <laughs> Because of she, a piece of paper. Yeah. She was always fit. And she had the night terrors going on too. Oh gosh. And, and she can as talk to George. Mm -hmm. Stephen slash David, as we yes. find out, he too mm -hmm. had nightmares. The reason I like this chapter, it's different than what we've been reading is because she does the sliding doors with what's going on with David, Stephen, and her at the same time. Mm -hmm. And the mother and the adopted mother of David slash Stephen, which I thought was an interesting sort of um, what everyone's going through at that moment. And he's going through anger, a lot of anger. He's this As great he's kid, getting, but he's got anger. Issues. And he's got this, you know, then he feels the several references to feeling guilty. And when he did bring it up to his adoptive mother, Esther, um, uh -huh, Esther, she uh, would basically shut down and and not want to give him information and, and but then also she talked about the story that they were given by the adoption agency yes that you know they were they were focused on their education and Highly they couldn't educated. be parents and she was going to be a doctor or something or go into something and so he was wondering well am i an inconvenience right weird message for him to hear was not the was I just inconvenient? Well, I mean, could... think about all yeah. we uh, we were all told kind of the adopt. Uh, uh, I think by and large, adoption mm -hmm. agencies and the baby scoop era told people, you know, they the they want she your birth mother wanted what was best for you, and she didn't think she was able to take care of you. She yeah. was still in school. She needed to focus on school. You know, I had my like you, she was tall and athletic, and <laughs> just all this stuff that was yeah. Yeah. And he, he did have a lot of, um, there was something interesting that the, the mother Esther said there was somewhere where someone asked her something about, do you care that he's different and not yours or adopt? And she said, and she said, you're so brave to adopt someone else's child. Oh yeah. Which is a weird message too, because there's those messages too. And then she said, brave 
Is it brave to love? Because obviously like this Esther, David's parents really did love him. They just had no clue about what was going on with him or how to talk to him well, about because it. Because mm-hmm. nobody talked no. about it. Yeah. And it, and it made me sad because they were, they were nice people that were trying to give him the best. And he had these, it was interesting because he's succeeding in all these areas, but he had these anger outbursts that were not normal. Right. Well, and he talked, you know, uh, all about the feelings and what Mm -hmm. he felt. And then he got curious about his birth mother and where he came from. And he got very, you know, Esther gave him the most basic of information that she had, but she also wasn't willing to open up and talk about it. Um, You know, stuff. Yeah. Right. Her stuff made it (laughs) impossible for the, you know, once again, the child kind of taking care of everybody. And then also as this really struck me too. I mean, Margaret was just such a thoughtful, kind being, you know, and she, and so as, as her parents got sick and, and George's parents got sick and then George himself got sick at like 38, he got gout, he got this, he got all sorts of, he had a uh, autoimmune Mm -hmm. each time Margaret would call the Louise Wise Agency. I'm mm. going to always call them out. A hor- particularly horrible <laughs> agency. Um, would call them up and and well, it went from never call us again. That we don't know who that child baby is. To yes, thank I you. Noticed. We'll put this. We'll put this in his record. And then never Nothing. communicated that information to his family. No. Uh, vital medical information that. Yep. You know, three grandparents with cancer, very mm-hmm. young. Mm-hmm. her husband with problems. Yeah. They, that was the, that was the message. She, the lady literally said, we'll put it in the file and then never was told. Yeah. But I bet they didn't even write it down to be honest with you. Probably not. I mean, yeah, probably not. I, the whole thing is, it made me sad. This, um, just that she had her first son. That's kind of where she went through a lot of stuff with, uh, I'm talking about Margaret here, where she started to as their second son, but her first, you know, son that she could say was her son started to have those feelings of guilt too. Like, mm-hmm. am I cheating almost on my first son? Yeah. And where is he? And the part made me cry. Just what they went through. To, it, it still blows my mind that they stayed together and couldn't get their baby back. It's I know just, it's heartbreaking. I'm glad they're reintroducing him now too, David, because I want to see how we end up from the beginning to where we are. Yes. Yes. Well, I think obviously we know they reunite at some point. So I am mm-hmm. very, very curious. curious. It's just, uh, I just love this book so much. I actually, Brenda, my stepsister ordered it. I'm, I, oh, good. I said, everybody, every everybody. person in this country should read this book to understand the history of adoption. Yeah. I think they should too. Maybe I'll give it out this year. It's gifts. Yeah. I mean, up when we have gifts to give, I think it's a great thing. Um, our guest coming on brings up some stuff that goes along with this with another, yes. another famous place, Louise Wise Agency, similar. Yeah. Oh, so this will be, this will be good to hear. All right. Well, we'll see you in just a minute. See you in a minute. 